Happy spring! End of April, start of May. Here's my stack. Is it weird that my reading mood changes with the season? I'm not always in the mood for the same kind of story in nice weather as I am in like rainy, cold, chilly weather. Anyway, here's what I did read in April. I was just starting The Sword of Kaigen on my last wrap up. I think I'd only read like the first couple of pages. So though I technically ended March with this one, really I was starting April with this book. I do already have my spoiler free review and my deep dive of this one. <laughs> so I won't say too much, but it was darker than I expected, a little more grim than I expected. It was more triggering than I expected. I don't know. I don't know what I really expected. I will say my overall impressions of the book are good and I would recommend it, but I would want to make sure people knew what they were getting themselves into before reading it. <laughs> Asian inspired, elemental powers, they fight a lot. Also very traditional gender roles. So the main woman, when she goes to get married to her very traditional husband, has to put away her past and her sword and then has to bear sons that then get trained to go be fighters to defend their homeland. Lots of pain, lots of trauma, lots of healing and redemption at different points for different characters. It was also heavier than I expected. <laughs> so after this one, I did finally get to Arch Conspirator. Arch Conspirator <laughs> by Veronica Roth. This is the bonus book that got thrown in when I was sent the arc for When Among Crows. It took me longer to read than I expected because I got very sick. Not the kind of sick where you sit on the couch and read, but the kind of sick where I could not do anything except throw up. It was not pleasant. Anyway, the book itself was fine. I actually liked When Among Crows better, but I still think it was well done. Veronica Roth seems to be good at writing all different story lengths. This one is super short, but I felt like it had a full story arc. Little dystopian, little itty bitty bit of romance, a non-traditional ending, and names that I did not know how to pronounce. <laughs> uh, probably next month, sometime in May, I'll put out a review for it. It'll probably be a pretty short review, but overall I've been really liking Veronica Roth's writing style and will not be opposed to reading more of her stuff. Then after this one, Unbound. It's what I'm in the middle of right now. Not really the middle, I'm past the middle. I have less than 100 pages left. I was between a couple of different books depending on whether I was going to be a part of the ARC team for this series. And so <laughs> I was just about to pick up the other book that I was planning on reading. And that day I got an email saying, you've been accepted to the ARC team. So I'm going to get an advanced reader copy of book four of this series. Not sure when, the author has been putting out updates that he's almost done working on it. So I felt like I should probably get to this one so I have time to read the third one. <laughs> and I have to say, I am enjoying this one better than the first one, which I'm not really surprised by. The first book, Ascendant, was very tropey and very, uh, I'll say expected. This one still feels, I mean, it feels like the same author, same world, same writing style. It still feels like it's appropriate for the same age group, although it is a little darker. The point of view characters have opened up a little more. So instead of just being Holt, we're getting a couple other point of views and seeing a little more of what's going on in the world. A little more behind the scenes with the Scourge. We get to see some of the other places in the world, which I really like, and I hope that continues into the other books. I'm not getting a good sense of where the rest of the series will go, but judging by the fact that this is only book two, the character that the main characters think is the big baddie obviously has to not be the big baddie, <laughs> or things are going to go different than I expect. I don't know, uh, but I am enjoying this and I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the series. I'm gonna read book three and four and then have to wait who knows how long for book five. <sighs> That's why I don't always read new releases. So this will be what I end April on and going into May, I'll read the other book that I was gonna read if I didn't read this one. The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. Speaking of new releases coming out, <laughs> the third one of these I think comes out later in the fall. So I'm going to start this one next. I have the second one. I don't know when I'll read it. I don't know if I'll want it to be 
fresher in my mind before I get to the third one, we'll see. But this one has like been on my mind ever since finishing The Faithful and the Fallen. I've been wanting to get to his other books. I feel emotionally drawn in by the author's life. I follow him on Instagram and he's been very open about the tragedy that happened in his life and how that affected his writing of the third book in this series. And I almost feel like I'm going to be very emotional once reading that third book, knowing what happened in his life and knowing that somehow he kept going and kept writing. Whew. And I know I've said I don't particularly care for very dark books and The Sword of Kaigen was kind of dark and grim in some places. And I know to expect that from these, but I know that going in. Whereas I didn't really know that going into The Sword of Kaigen, I kind of know what to expect because I've read other books of his and I've heard that these are just better than the other ones. So I'm really excited about it. <laughs> and then for the rest of May, I'm not planning it. I'll mood read. I'll decide when I get there. This is the only one I am picking out for sure to read in May. I've planned several of my reads lately, and as a mood reader, I want the freedom to say, I'm in the mood for this. So we'll see. As per my last wrap up video, I was doing research and I am not going to do YouTube channel memberships. YouTube actually takes a lot of the percentage of what people give to creators through YouTube memberships and Patreon takes a much smaller percentage. So the creators get more. And when you go to support a creator, I feel like you wanna know they're actually getting what you give them. So I have actually set up my Patreon. I have it linked to a Discord that I'm working on, that I'm hoping to launch in May. We'll see, try not to stress about it, but you might see me post about it soon. Let me know what you're excited to read next month and uh, happy reading. Bye.